A twin is someone who looks just like you. I like to think we're different, but we're like an old married couple. It's really a bad analogy. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a privilege and a curse. Gosh. <laughs> this is my partner for life. He doesn't like to get really close. No. That's good enough right there. Yeah, that's good. I never felt the need to be married because I already have my companion. I already have my best friend. I already have my relationship. This is what I need right here. For every 250 births in America, a set of identical twins is born. And each has their own story of unconditional love or the struggle for individuality. You can tell mine are bigger. Go ahead and feel it. They share virtually 100% of their DNA, and a bond we singletons might never truly understand. So tonight, I'm on a journey to explore what makes this identity so special. We're about to meet for the very first time after 35 years. It was as if I, I had known her all my life. Identical twins seem to have what we all crave, connection. But what are the deeper joys and costs of sharing so much of who you are with someone else? I don't think I could physically live without my sister. America, it can be inspiring and beautiful. It can also be dark and ugly. It's so many things, but it's ours. It's our America. Most days, Twinsburg, Ohio looks no different than your average small town. But something extraordinary is about to happen here. Every August, Twinsburg hosts Twins Days, the world's largest annual gathering of multiples. It kicks off tomorrow. But some twins are getting an early start. What are we planning on wearing tonight? We'll wear the green. Okay, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. okay, so that's, okay, okay that's now good. if we go to a lounge or something, what are we wearing? Either the black capris or the brown capris. Marlene and Darlene have been coming to Twinsburg for nine years now, and they've earned a reputation as some of the festival's twiniest twins. We, we dress like all the time. time. We talk all the time, go everywhere together, have do the same everything. Have the same careers. careers. We do do everything together, together all, all the time. time. Oh, I need a Twinsday keychain, I'm getting that. I do too. We got about the hoodies. hoodies. Yeah, yes. we got about them right away this time. There we go. Welcome, twins. Double, Double the fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> For Marlene and Darlene, Twins Days is an oasis. Okay. Away from their jobs and families, they'll get to indulge in their favorite activity. How are you? <laughs> Spending every waking moment with each other. There you go. Right here. Okay. They've arrived in Twinsburg a day early. It should be the next room, sis. Okay. But someone else got here first. <laughs> oh, no! These sisters, who emerged into the world only nine minutes apart, have just turned 50 together. And the milestone hasn't gone unnoticed. Oh, look at the bed, sis! <laughs> oh, Someone so snuck much. in early to decorate. Oh, oh. sis, look! <laughs> oh, there's Jeff and Steve, sis. Outside, a group of old friends has gathered, brought together by a shared genetic anomaly. But this isn't your average pool party. It feels more like walking into a hall of mirrors. It's a taste of what this weekend is all about.
If you're out in your hometown, you know, and we're walking the mall, we're probably the only set of twins Twins there. So we're we're different. Here you're not different. Here's to being 50 50 and fabulous. (laughs) We considered ourselves soulmates. We were born together as as soulmates. So from the beginning, you had somebody somebody there. Always there. You were never Alone. alone. For 50 years, Marlene and Darlene have lived in two-part harmony. Raised in a household that encouraged their sameness, it seems inevitable that they'd turn out this way. But I wonder if things would have been different if they'd spent their lives separated from the one they're closest to. I can't imagine two people on earth being closer than my sister and me. And there was a time when we were separated and she was literally a world away and I felt so incomplete. I just wonder if the feeling is more intense when you actually share the same DNA. Two years ago, my little sister was arrested while on assignment on the North Korean border and accused of espionage. The 140 days she was held captive were the most difficult of my life. But what if that separation lasts for decades and the sister you lose is your identical twin? I've come to a home in New Jersey to meet two women who endured just that. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Linda. Linda and Linda. Doreen. Doreen. Nice yes. to see you. Come on in. I mean, that must have been a pretty traumatizing experience on, on so many levels. You spent most of your life thinking that she gave you away. Well, my adoptive mother told me that she got me for $500 in a black and white TV. Linda and Doreen's story starts in Japan where they were born in 1958 to an American GI and a Japanese woman named Reiko. The soldier abandoned the family soon after, leaving Reiko to raise twins alone. And what were the circumstances of your separation? My mom, after she had the two of us, had to go to work, and she had befriended this American woman who offered assistance with babysitting. She would come and pick up Doreen, and then she would drop her back off to the house. And one day, she just didn't bring her back. And when my mom went to try to find her, the whole family had gone. The babysitter kidnapped Doreen and smuggled her out of Japan. Reiko was devastated with nowhere to turn for help. In another twist, both twins moved to the United States. Doreen with her abductor to Ohio and Linda to New Jersey when Reiko married another American GI. Reiko hired a private investigator to track down her missing daughter, but the search came up empty. All the while, both sisters knew they had a twin. Each was given this photograph by their families of them together as infants. My sister and I are so close, I can't even imagine not knowing where she was. How would you feel and what would you think when you look at that photo? There's somebody out there that looks just like me. Do they look like me still, you know? And what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? What, 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 What path has their life taken? yet the circumstances of their separation were kept hidden. Doreen grew up thinking that her biological mother had sold her for a television and $500. Linda was told that Doreen was with their father and resigned herself to that fact. You have to realize that as a young child growing up, there are things that you can't control. You know, it's not like you can go out running into the streets saying, has anyone seen my sister? Can please, you know, someone. I just figured that's just the way it is and there's nothing else I can do to change it. I was angry. Knowing that, you know, I had a twin out there, but 
I mean, that's what I was told, and that's what I believed. For 35 years, a sense of helplessness and fear of what they might find kept either woman from searching for the other. Until finally, a friend convinced Doreen to begin looking for her mother. A month later, with the help of a contact in Japan, she found what she was looking for. I got a phone call. We found your mother and your sister. They live in New Jersey. He gave me the number, and I said, I got to do this now. So I, I called, and I said, is Reiko Cunningham there? And she says, yes. And I said, did you happen to give birth to two twin girls in 1958? It, it was silence. <laughs> OK, going off to Ohio. Two days later, Linda, Rako, and the family made the 10-hour drive to Ohio. We're about to meet for the very first time after 35 years. What was that like? Is she going to look like me? Is she going to be built like me? Just those questions and, you know, just the anticipation. We pulled in, and I was I, I'm not looking over there. I'm not looking, I cannot, I just don't want to, you know, because what if it wasn't for real? <laughs> After I hugged Linda, I looked over at Rako. I just knew she was my mom. I, I can't explain that. You just know in your heart that this, this is the woman that gave birth to me. It was only after the reunion that Doreen learned the truth about her kidnapping. And it took years to heal both sisters' pain and anger. 16 years later, they're closer than ever. And I'll soon learn that their sense of connection might not be a matter of choice, but a destiny encoded in their DNA. We live in a country where few virtues are as respected as individuality. We're independent. We go it alone. But for some identical twins, independence may not be what matters most. Yeah, we're two different people, but really, I would consider us being one, one person. She's like the other half that I don't have. And without both of them put together, there is no connection. In the suburbs of Minneapolis, two sisters embody the twin bond. All right, do you want to do the liquids or the solids? You do the solids. Um, I'll do the solids. Chelsea and Bailey are 23 years old. For those 23 years, they've been each other's constant companion, a connection nurtured from the moment they were born. From the very beginning, our parents would request to have Chelsea and I in the same um, class, the, the same, same teacher, teacher, to have the same friends, to communicate with each other on the same level. And if our parents didn't put us together, I don't think we'd be as close as we are now. I'm always thinking about her. We go shopping together. We go to work out together. We come home together. We <laughs> eat together. The sisters do everything they can to stay connected. But isn't growing up supposed to be about carving out your own identity? A lot of people think that we should be our own people, that we should split apart from each other, and I disagree. We feel that we need to stay closer together, because if we venture out, we're going to lose the bond that we had. Not all twins are as close as Chelsea and Bailey. But last year, they found themselves in similar company when they attended their first Twins Days festival. That first year was probably the best experience I've ever had in my entire life. 
because everybody understands you, you're a twin. We hadn't expected what we had coming. What they had in store was a chance encounter with 27-year-old twin brothers, Jason and Scott. So we're out on the dance floor. Chelsea and Bailey are walking around and because they're cute and because they're beautiful, you know, you just, you see that. They were the ones who were pretty much leading all the dances. They were the center of the attention. We knew kind of right away that, oh, you know, we kind of like them, they're, kind of, they're really nice, but we got to see how it goes. So the first thing you can do is start with the phone call. Text message from Jason. That phone call evolved into a daily ritual. Now the anticipation is coming to a head. Tomorrow, Chelsea and Bailey are meeting Jason and Scott for this year's Twins Days, and they're hoping to rekindle last year's spark. One of the things that we were looking forward to with Twins Days this year was just spending more time with each other. We're just trying to figure out exactly what this, our relationship, ships are. Today, preparations are underway. Both sets of siblings are putting the finishing touches on their look. Hi, how are you today? Good, Good. How, how are you? you? Good. Hi, how are you? All right, how are you? How are you? Good. I'm gonna take care of Jason right here. Hi. Scott, have a seat right over here, please. Okay. And for these identical twins, the ideal is sameness. So Scott, what are we looking to do today? Well, Jason, as you can tell, has much shorter hair. He's just going to get some touch-ups around the sides and the back and everything. With my hair, I want to try and match his as close as possible. Okay. Oh. Do you know what the color you like? Just the a French, French with a blue tip and on her toes. I think it's very important to look the same, to be the same, to have everything exactly alike as your twin. Your we twin own. Twin. Yes being a twin. We like being a twin and if we didn't like it we wouldn't dress the same. We would find ways to be different. For Chelsea and Bailey and Jason and Scott it's a double excitement. Tomorrow they get to show off their matching looks for the Twins Days Festival and for each other. We're gonna be so excited tonight. We're not gonna get any I'm not gonna sleep. Be able to sleep tonight. I know. Over the course of the year, we've talked to them a lot more, and we've, the four of us have gotten really close. You know, it's very exciting to be able to have that time to, you know, hang out with them, get to know them and everything, um, and just really get to know another set of, set of twins. I think they're cute. I think they're very similar, just like we are. It's a romance in four parts. and tomorrow they get to put it to the test. This year could be the beginning of something new or it could be the end. <laughs> Romance, connection, community. This festival seems to promise and inspire it all. And for one set of brothers, it's taken on an even deeper significance. Twinsburg is our weekend. One weekend to spend time together, to dress alike, you know, not feel out of place, and just have a good time. Even the years I've been sick, uh, we've made it out there. And we're going to keep trying to make it every, every year, mm -hmm. as long as we can. Ed and Jim have attended Twins Days for 27 years straight. It's a lifetime commitment. But everything changed when 44-year-old Jim was diagnosed with a form of leukemia. They gave me three to five years, and I didn't know if I'd even live three years. They're telling you you could be dead tomorrow. It was hard, but uh, it's not going to take me easy. <laughs> Doctors told him the cancer was a death sentence, but Jim is a survivor. 
And nine years later, he's still fighting with a determination that comes from having something to fight for. My youngest is nine years old, and that's Paul. Hey, Paul. And then there's Annie, who's 11, and James, who uh, is 13. How was your day, guys? Good. Super. Same as usual. <laughs> Same as usual. We had a fire drill today. Oh, fire drills are fun. I wanted <laughs> it to be in history, though. <laughs> Jim and his family live in Michigan. While his wife works, Jim runs the house. Errands, cooking, and watching the kids. Any parent knows that's a big job. But family is Jim's inspiration. Like I tell everybody, I have three kids to worry about. I don't have time to worry about my cancer. My kids keep me going. My kids and my family. He knows I'll slap him around if he gives <laughs> up. <laughs> to help him along, Jim has a secret weapon. His identical brother, Ed. Hey you guys. Who's the other two? I don't know. Find them. <laughs> I can hear them over there. Yeah, okay. Where's your brother? That's the one I'm worried about. Oh, he's caught. He ain't going nowhere. Take a walk to her! When they were small, the little ones would just kind of look and look and look and look at the two of us. So I've become Uncle Daddy. And I got your brother. These days, with medications altering Jim's face, it's hard to imagine anyone mixing him and Ed up. But before his illness, you wouldn't have been able to tell them apart. Their entire lives, the brothers have been best friends, competitors, and teammates. Their point of pride is athletics, swimming, golf, and their favorite pastime, bowling. It's a way of distinguishing themselves from each other, even as it brings them closer together. Bowling is our most competitive sport. We've always done everything together. We've always been, you know, the same. We've been competitive. I mean, yeah. and it's... That's one thing twins are, is they're very competitive. Yeah. Twins are very competitive. I mean, in everything you do, you, you want to outdo the other one. Yeah. Lately, with Jim's strength waning, it's harder for him to keep up. And that's taken a toll on both brothers. I told him, hey, your strength will come back. Don't give up. We've always kept up with each other. We've always pushed each other. We've always kept each other going. And, you know, it's, it's tough seeing him not be able to keep up. It's really tough. Ironically, though, Jim's cancer has made their connection even more profound. The doctor said, uh, do you have any siblings? And I said, yeah, I have a twin brother. And he was like, spare parts. When his doctor suggested stem cell transplant, that I could be a donor, I'm like, where do I go? What do I need to do? What do I, you know, tell me, you know, I'm there. Ed has donated his stem cells to Jim twice. Their identical DNA means that Jim's body accepted Ed's cells as his own. The brother's sameness has helped keep Jim alive. But the cancer has taken its toll. And after 27 years of attending Twins Days, can Ed and Jim keep the tradition alive? Twin sisters Chelsea and Bailey have just arrived at the Cleveland airport. <laughs> and they're on the lookout for their ride. I'm really excited. I know, me too. <laughs> Twin brothers Jason and Scott. They're right there, I see their feet. I can't see. 
who they met at last year's Twins Days Festival. Hi! <laughs> Sorry! How are you? How are you? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> I miss you. I miss you too. Yeah, yeah. Hello. How are you? How are you? Uh, all right, how are you? Good. Good. <laughs> Seeing the four of them together begs the question, when twins date twins, how do they decide who is the better match? It all comes down to something I would have thought was irrelevant, birth order. The A twin in medical terms is defined by the twin that was born first. So I'm born first, so I am the A twin. And Sky was born second, so he is therefore the B twin. I'm the A twin. I'm the B twin. <laughs> the way it's decided which twin is going to date initially, the other initially is A twins go together and then the B twins go together. It's strange, but there are a lot of similarities between the A twins that date and the B twins that date. An age difference of minutes, even seconds, can affect how twins relate to each other. Chelsea and Jason, the firstborn A twins, have paired off, as have younger B twins, Bailey and Scott. Now the four are on their way to Twinsburg, where Marlene and Darlene are already settled in and reminiscing. In high school, we would dress different. We started that thing, you know, for a while, dressing different in high school. That didn't last long. And we were like, this is weird. It, just, it wasn't us. And then as we got older, you know, you just realized, you know what? We got to be who we are. For as long as they can remember, Marlene and Darlene have been two halves of the same whole, with a shared nickname to match, Sis. Who's who? I, have, I don't know, Sis. They move, talk, they even seem to think in sync. 64, 64, so we were three. I had broken my arm in sixth grade. So my parents were taking me to the emergency room and so I went she to went to my aunt's, aunt's house. house to stay. Well, she was in the ER forever and finally I said to my aunt Irene, I said, well, they'll be coming pretty soon. They just set Sis's arm. And she goes, well, how do you know? I said, because I, I just fell it. it. The sisters live eight miles apart in homes the same color. They often choose the same outfits without planning to. Both are school teachers. But the matching career is no coincidence. 31 years ago, Darlene made the decision for both of them. I said, I think I want to be a teacher. So I signed up, registered for all my classes. Started to walk away. I said, I can't go this without sis. I said, she wants to be a teacher too. I call her and she answers at the law firm. I said, uh, you need to give them your two weeks notice. I said, what? what? She because said, well, you're going to school, school to be a teacher. I said, what? She goes, I'm a secretary. She I said, said well, well, you're going to be a teacher. teacher now. So, you know, we never strive to, like, go our own separate ways to have our own individuality. I guess we didn't want it. Marlene and Darlene both have husbands and families of their own. But that hasn't diminished their commitment to each other. We picked out these like rings the and to look like a wedding band type ring. Mm -hmm. We had engraved sis put on it. Yeah, I mean, in, in a way, it's like we're married to each other, mm -hmm. you know? So, till death do us part. Yeah. <laughs> Four years ago, Chelsea attempted to go her own way when she followed a boyfriend to college three hours from home and left Bailey behind. I did feel betrayed by her leaving. I'd wake up and I'd cry and I'd go to bed crying. I struggle when she's not, when she wasn't around. I couldn't do things for myself. I always had somebody to, to do it for me. My first year in college was the hardest time of my life because she wasn't there and I basically didn't know what to do with my life. The day that I moved, it hit me rock hard. Why did I move up here alone and leave Bailey? Ultimately, independence wasn't worth the sacrifice. And two years later, Chelsea moved back home to live with Bailey. I think we realized how much we both need each other, and that's how we got closer. Yeah. It's the kind of intimacy many of us long for. But I can't help questioning the costs. When you rely on someone else to understand yourself, 
Who do you become when that bond is broken? Even before they're born, identical twins intrigue us. Scientists still don't understand why a single fertilized egg splits in the womb, creating two genetically identical people. But despite how little we know about them, twins have a lot to reveal about us. Twin studies give us new ways of understanding human behavioral phenomena. The biological and environmental components of disease, of intelligence, of personality. The list is limitless. For more than 30 years, Dr. Nancy Siegel has been studying reunited twins. Dr. Siegel? Yes. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. So nice to meet you. Same here. It's a passion that's personal. Nancy is a twin herself. Nice to meet you. Today, she's meeting Linda and Doreen, twins reunited after 35 years apart. The reason why we want to study twins raised apart is you help us solve questions such as, is the behavior more influenced by nature? Is it influenced more by nurture? You share all your genes in common, and yet they're raised in totally different environments. If we see similarities between you, then we know that these kinds of traits are strongly influenced by the genes. Nancy recruits me as her research assistant. And through a series of questions, we examine how Doreen and Linda are different and similar. Do you have any phobias? Uh, yeah, I'm a fear of, I have a fear of heights. Scared to death of heights. What is your favorite color? Darker green. Darker blues. How often do you drink alcohol? Uh, very, very little. Never. Do you have a favorite smell? Florals. Smells, perfumes. The questions might seem elementary, but the answers have fascinated scientists for decades. Hey, I have you at 62 and a quarter inches, okay. which is exactly what I got for your sister. <laughs> Despite being raised apart, separated twins are often closely aligned, suggesting genes play a major role in who we are. Try it the other way and tell me how it feels. Right. And Linda and Doreen are a perfect case study. So you'd hold Danielle with the left hand. Living with her biological mother in a supportive household, Linda was encouraged to get an education. While Doreen was raised by her abductor and an alcoholic stepfather. By 17, she was pregnant. She never finished high school. Yet despite their different upbringings and not knowing each other for most of their lives, Linda and Doreen's bond was instant and intense. When you met Linda for the first time, did she seem familiar? It was almost like I knew what she was thinking. More familiar than a best friend. When I look at her or when I speak to her, I hear myself. Even though we're separate people, the more we spoke, the more it was like I knew her life like she had never been gone. I think on average there is no closer bond than identical twins. Why is that? It's the perception of similarities that triggers an attraction and a liking between people. And the identical twins feel this immediately. All right, you pick a color because I want to see what it looks like on me. This is the potential for really sharing everything with somebody, of thinking so much alike this intimacy and acceptance, it's irresistible. Oh, oh, oh. I figured. Oh, I like that. It's a fascinating theory about human behavior. We like what is like us. Today. Hmm. And no two people are more alike than identical twins. I really like, oh, I like that one. But growing up apart has given Linda and Doreen a double perspective on their relationship both inseparable and individual. We may be genetically the same, but I have my own likes and dislikes. I know she does, and we're happy that way. What do you think would have happened if you hadn't been separated? You kind of have to just let that go. You have to, because if you let, it'll just eat, it'll eat you up. I don't need to look back and think of all the negative things that happened. No regrets. No regrets. 
Saturday, August 6th, the day Marlene and Darlene have been waiting for. How's that? We need more. Today is the high point of the Twins Days Festival. Okay. The Double Take Parade. Oh. <laughs> this year's theme is the circus. And Marlene and Darlene have been planning their costume for months. Now it's time to unveil it. Can you tell we're nuts? I'm roasting. I want to. In the car. Do you think this is gonna oh, I affect my driving? Medicine. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I can't, if I'm running into you, I'm I, well, I can't see like right or left. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna have to take the hat off, sis. Okay. And the gloves to drive. And I'll put my, my person there. Mm -hmm. Let me double check. Hats, hats, canes, canes, purse, purse. Okay. There, there might be other peanuts here, though. There could be. There's some wild costumes here. I mean, some people really get into it. I mean, like, this could be nothing compared to what some people are going to be dressed like. If you think your eyes are bad and you start to feel it sad, don't you worry, it's no trouble, because you're only really seeing double T. W-I-N-S-S. You're seeing double T. At the parade grounds, a crowd is gathering. Hi! Good, how are you? Good, how you are you? Look so I'm cute. Good, Everyone's gonna go as a magician, though. I know, but everybody's like, no, no, Finland! Oh my, your outfits are beautiful! New Jersey! Love it. Love it. Hey. I heard someone say. Nearly 2,000 sets of siblings have come from around the country and the world just to walk down the main street of Twinsburg, Ohio. As the event officially begins, it feels less like a parade and more like a pilgrimage. Today, twins don't just draw attention, they revel in it. This is their celebration of a common uniqueness. You shouldn't search for your identity. It should come natural to you. You were born in this world, and you have to be what you were born to be. We were given the gift of being alike and being a twin, so why, why not, not use that blessing? As the parade winds down, the festival grounds open up for an afternoon of contests. Best costume. Okay, you ready? Face each other, ladies. Most alike twins. It's also a chance for Chelsea and Jason and Bailey and Scott to face the challenges of a four-part relationship. Scott lives in Louisville, Kentucky, Jason outside Cleveland. And at least right now, Chelsea and Bailey can't imagine going separate ways. It's a package deal. The girls have even said before, if I'm dating one twin, she's got to date the other. Or if I move to a city for the guy, my sister's coming with me. I don't want to have to choose between my husband or my boyfriend versus my sister, my twin, who I've always had with me my whole life. I feel like once you do have children and you, you are a family, your life starts to change. And I don't want her to be out of my life. I don't think her. I could physically live without my sister. Ed and Jim have made it to Twins Days for their 28th straight year. 
but they face an uncertain future. Doctors hoped that Ed's stem cells could fight off Jim's cancer. Ultimately, though, their sameness has worked against them. What they said is that you guys are just too identical and his cells aren't fighting the myeloma cells. The first two transplants, I felt like I was contributing and helping out, and then now I just kind of feel helpless. I don't know how to explain it. You know, I'm probably going to be lost without him. I want to do a lot, but I can't. I can just be there for him and hope that everything goes good. In New Jersey, Linda's family is gathering for a farewell dinner. Is that possible? Tomorrow, Doreen flies home to Ohio, but the sisters won't be separated for long. Both their biological mother and Doreen's abductor have since passed away. And Doreen and Linda have healed, brought their families together, and set out on an intertwined future. She has got to see my oldest daughter get married, my youngest daughter get married, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be here when her children get married and the births of their children. We came into this world together, and oh, I hope when I take my last nice. breath, if it's before her, that she's there with me. Back in Ohio, it's the last night of the Twins Days Festival. And Chelsea and Bailey are celebrating with Jason and Scott a year to the day from when they first met. For now, the four have decided to put a romance on hold. But they've started a friendship that could last a lifetime. I think about her every day. And I can't say that about any other girl that I've met. I could very easily fall in love with Bailey, plain and simple. <laughs> now, whether or not that's happened yet, we'll leave that open to interpretation. She is my number one priority in my life. I can lose a boyfriend, I can lose a friend. Yeah, it would hurt me, but it wouldn't hurt me as much as losing her. Losing her. We're more than just sisters, we're twins. Jim and Ed are closing out the festival with a tradition of their own. The Twins Bowling Tournament. And Jim's defying expectations once again. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. All right. He beat Ed in the first round. But I suspect that tonight, Ed is happy to see Jim take the lead. I don't want to be like the, the old lady that just sits in the chair and waits for the cancer to take him. I want to be the, I'm, I keep going. I'm going to be walking and talking and running and doing whatever I want until the day I kick over. Not going to go easy. I'm not going to go easy. I'm going to fight this fight this until I can fight it no more. Tomorrow, Jim and Ed return home. Next week, Jim starts another round of radiation treatments. These final hours are a reprieve from what awaits and a celebration of a bond they've shared for as long as they've been alive. My great brother, great friend, always there, like a soulmate. We'll be brothers till the end. Yeah, nothing gonna separate us. Thanks for coming, uh, we're all set. Um, next, I hope to see you guys next year and have a safe uh, drive home. Thanks. As the festival closes, the highlight of Marlene and Darlene's year ends. Ready? Guess the fun's already over. This is what we said. And 
preparation for next year's Twins Days begins. Sometimes people will say, well, what's it like being a twin? Well, well we, we don't, don't know, know what it's like not to be a twin. twin. Okay, you're all set. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so See much. You. See you Thanks. next year. All right, bye. bye. If you were a twin that wasn't enthusiastic, you wouldn't come to the Twins Day Festival. We'll never miss. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be here with wheelchairs and, and oxygen, and, and yeah. we'll be here. Whether inseparable all their lives or separated for decades, identical twins do things a little differently than the rest of us. You should be on this side because yeah, I'm always on the left. Maybe life is less lonely, and its burdens less heavy when they're shared with someone else. The rest of us can only watch and wonder. I can't imagine not sharing my life, my birthday, my feelings, my love, everything with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of like to be triplets. I'd love that. Everyone should have a twin. Yeah. I mean, it's the greatest thing on earth. We've always felt like we were the same people just in two different bodies. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, we are weird. But we're twins. So it's a, it's a good thing. Now you want us to hug, nah. like him up, like you see every other twin. Yeah, hold hands. Yeah, yeah no, it's not going to no, happen. No. It's about it right here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it.